Are you getting too much noise in your multi-person recordings? Maybe you're doing a podcast with three, four people, and it just sounds noisy. Well, auto mix might actually be a good solution for you. Now, first of all, when someone says they're getting too much noise in a multi-person recording, they're often actually referring to microphone bleed, which is when someone's voice is captured not only by their own microphone, but also to a smaller extent by the microphones of those nearby. So, so you have a four-person podcast, everyone has their own microphone. When I talk, my mic will be captured by my microphone, but it will also, to some extent at least, be captured by the other people's microphone around me. So that's one thing. Now, another thing is that when you have multiple microphones active, actually capturing audio at the same time in the same room, you're essentially capturing more room tone, more room noise because you have four microphones capturing it instead of just one capturing it. And that all kind of adds up. So to fix this problem, we do it by actively mixing. That is to say, by manually fading down microphones that aren't currently being spoken into using the faders on your recorder or recording app or mixer, and then fading them back up when that person starts to talk into that microphone again. So at any given time, ideally you'd have, say if you have a four person podcast, one person's microphone fader would be up and the others would be farther down, not all the way down necessarily, but enough so that you're getting a cleaner recording. That's one way. Now, there's another way to fix this in post-production, and it's fairly tedious to be honest, but in post-production, you can actually go and cut out the portions on a track for a person where they're not talking. So for example, on this track right here, this is my track. When Danny's talking down here, we could just cut this part out of my track right there so that we end up with a cleaner mix altogether. But the reality is, is if you have an hour long podcast, for example, it could easily take 90 minutes, 120 minutes to do all that cleanup, all that cutting out of the stuff that you don't need. So that's pretty tedious. Now, a less tedious way to do this is to use an auto mixer on your field recorder or mixer. The Sound Devices Mix Pre Series or the Zoom F6 or F8 series recorders have this feature. The pro level field recorders from Sound Devices and Zaxcom used in TV and film production also have this. And so do many of the larger digital pro-level mixing boards these days, but they're not the least expensive recorders or mixing boards on the market, so many of us can't necessarily afford those. There's another option, and that is to use an auto mixer plug-in in post-production in your digital audio workstation app. This makes it easier for you to focus on the content you're recording while you're recording, rather than having to multitask and be a mixer and a host all at once. And today we'll talk about a specific auto mixer plugin called WT Auto Mixer. It's made by a company called Wavemark, and uh, I have to fully disclose, they gave this license to me. Uh, it's funny, actually back in 2021, early 2021, I downloaded a trial of this and I demoed it on my live stream. And then afterwards they contacted me and said, hey, here's a license. Um, so um, they did give me the license to make this video, just in full disclosure. Now, back then in 2021, it was on version one and it was okay. I didn't end up using it a lot and sort of forgot about it. And then this week I decided to give it another try now that they're well into version two. And I can say that WT Auto Mixer is actually pretty nice at this point. It's a plugin for your digital audio workstation or your live streaming app. I haven't checked those yet, but it's a plugin in VST3, AU, or AAX format. So that means it works in Pro Tools, it works in Logic, it works in Reaper. Uh, we just tested it here. It works in DaVinci Resolve's Fairlight, and that's what we're going to show you here in just a moment. It doesn't work in video editing apps like Final Cut or Premiere because it's a multi-channel plugin, and those don't necessarily work in nonlinear editors, video editing apps. It's available for both macOS and Windows, and the plugin has 2.67 milliseconds of latency. So you should even be able to use it for live streaming or any sort of live show. Now, if you don't know what that means, don't worry. It just, it's good. <laughs> it's good. Now, there are another couple of problems that WT Auto Mixer addresses. First of all, it has a noise gate, and we'll show you how that works. But it also does leveling. So when people are speaking, they can be quite dynamic. That is, they can go from whispering to laughing out loud for just spoken word, even a scream, I suppose. But hopefully there aren't a lot of screens on your on your podcast. In any case, WT Auto Mixer has a built-in leveler, which helps sort of even out those dynamics so you don't have to do that manually. And so that your audience isn't having to turn their volume up and then turn it back down and turn it back up just to hear and understand what's going on. So let's take a look at this in DaVinci Resolve. I have a little podcast that I recorded here on track one. This is my track. On track two, we have Danny. 
Uh, we were just in a reverberant space with wood floors, two microphones, uh, condenser microphones, incidentally. There was a dishwasher running in the background, refrigerator. It was not the ideal situation, but it's not an uncommon situation for podcasts that are recorded at home. And this is about what it sounds like. I'll start us right about here. No processing, straight out of the recorder. Welcome to the podcast today. Thank you. Thanks I, for having me. Yeah, the pleasure's mine. So I understand that you spent some time at a tea garden, a Japanese tea garden recently. Not just a Japanese tea garden. Oh, tell me about it. The Japanese tea garden at Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. Okay. And um, how, how was your experience there? It was lovely. It was a wonderful time. It was my first time there in the Okay. If you, uh, first of all, I would recommend you listen to this on headphones so you can hear specifically what we're talking about here. But there are a couple things there. It's not the worst recording in the world. Could you get away with this for your podcast? If if that's if this meets your level of expectations in terms of quality, then absolutely. Then you're dismissed. You don't have to listen to this. <laughs> but if you heard the noise in the background and you heard the reverberation, this WT Auto Mixer can help reduce some of that. And it's especially effective if you're using three microphones or four microphones because you have three or four people on your podcast. As soon as you add more people to your podcast recording, it tends to get noisier and noisier and noisier. And WT Auto Mixer can help and it can handle that. It can actually ha handle up to 16 channels of audio. So in any case, we just have a two channel recording here. And it's important, of course, that when you make these recordings, you do need to record multi-track, meaning you need to record each person to their own track and not just a stereo mix. So that's the first thing. Now that we have that, we're going to come in here and I'm going to go ahead and add this effect. And in fact, if I come over here, I have it down here at the bottom in the AU effects. It's the WT Auto Mixer. I'm just going to take that and drop it on the track on first on my track. And you can see it pops up right here. It recognizes, hey, there's a track here, and that's great. Now we have to also drop it on the second track. So you drop it on each track. You have to enable it on each track. And this is why it doesn't work in video editing apps is because it has to talk back and forth between these two tracks. Now you can see we have two instances of it here. We don't need both of them. You can see it's already recognized. We have two different channels here. And I can actually go ahead and name these. And I can say here, for example, this is my track. And uh, Danny's over here. So we've got that, so we've got clarity there. Now, um, I have a variety of controls and meters over here. And you might be asking, what do these mean? What do they do? <laughs> well, the first one is AG, that stands for automated gain. And so what this is going to do is that when I'm talking, it's going to shift the gain over to me. So you're basically just hearing mostly my microphone. When Danny talks, it will reduce my gain and boost her gain up. And that's a big secret here. That's the thing that makes it your mix cleaner is because now you're not leaving both microphones wide open the whole time so that when I'm talking, it's you're mostly hearing the recording that was made to my microphone. When Danny's talking, you're hearing mostly just the recording that was made to her microphone. Now, we talk back and forth and we switch pretty quickly, so it has to do some adjustment. And this is what it looks like when it does that. So let me play a little bit. Spring. Okay. I'm curious, what so what defines a Japanese tea garden? Do you drink tea there? You're asking me questions I don't exactly know <laughs> the answer to. Okay, let me ask it this way. Did you drink tea there? I didn't, but other people were. Okay. There so was a tea house there. There's a, now let me go ahead and turn it off just so you can hear it contrast. I'll turn it off and then I'll turn it back on. Little tea house, okay. But I suppose at a Japanese tea garden, I suppose there would need to be some sort of tea service. But there are also Japanese gardens that don't have tea. Okay, that's cool. I, I was just curious. So what did you experience at the tea garden? What did you see? I saw lots of lovely... Okay, so it actually did a nice job. It's not huge, huge difference in this particular case. Again, pretty good recording from the start. If you do this with three or four or more microphones, you're going to start to notice a massive, massive difference. So that's a start, but that's not all that WT Auto Mixer can do. And let me just uh, take this back to the start here. We have a couple more things too. I mentioned before there's a leveler as well. And then there's a second meter here. And what this meter shows is the level that's coming in, first of all, the input level from that particular track. And the, it'll show the leveler actually doing its work there. So if it adds green on top of the meter, on a little bar in the meter, that means it's adding gain. And if it shows red at the top of the meter, that means it's pulling it down because you're getting a little bit too loud. So let me just kind of demonstrate what that looks like. We'll 
get it right here and go again. Welcome to the podcast today. Thank you. Thanks and, for having me. Yeah, the pleasure's mine. So I understand that you spent some time at a tea garden, a Japanese tea garden recently. Not just a Japanese tea garden. Oh, tell me about it. The Japanese tea garden at Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. Okay. And um, how, how was your experience there? It was lovely. It was a wonderful time. It was my first time there in the spring. Okay. I'm curious, What so what defines a Japanese tea so you notice how it's doing that? It's like pulling my level down, especially at the start of a sentence when I'm especially loud. And the same for Danny. At the end of a sentence, it may be boosting it back up when we tend to get a little bit quieter. So this will just sort of even things out, which is a really nice thing as well. Now, there are a couple of other settings that we can use here. Um, these little symbols here, if you want to actually bake this into your track, you can actually turn on automation. And that's probably beyond the scope of what we're going to cover here today. But if you wanted to actually automate this into your track, you could do that. I want to just go ahead and leave these off for now. But you can do that both for the leveler and for the auto mix. So that can be pretty useful. Another thing too is if you're finding that the auto mixer is tends to be kicking in really well for, for maybe some of the people on the podcast, but not so well for others, for those that it's not working so well on, it's not kicking in when it should be, it's not boosting their levels back up when it should be, when they start talking, you can increase the sensitivity down here and you can go all the way up to, I believe it is 12. Yeah, all the way up to 12. Or if it's being, if it's triggering on somebody's microphone, it's turning their microphone, it's fading their microphone up too aggressively, too often, more than it should be, you can actually turn the sensitivity down on that one as well. So that's what that does. Now, this is probably beyond the scope of what we're going to cover here today, but you have three different mixing groups you can put things in. And we're just going to use this one mixing group because we have just two people. It's pretty straightforward. But if you had a lot more than that, you could break them up into separate groups. That's what that does. Of course, you have a mute and a bypass down here if you need those. And we also have a noise gate over here. So a noise gate's interesting. And incidentally, what I've learned is the noise gate has to be on to some extent. I have it just doing 1 dB of attenuation right now. And the way a noise gate works, of course, is that when you stop talking, it recognizes, oh, nobody's talking right now. In fact, the way it does that is you define where the noise floor is. In other words, if the audio falls below minus 42 dB, in this case, that's where we have it set, then it will say, oh, this is where we need to make things quieter. So it will actually push the levels down once the audio gets to that minus 42 dBs. It'll make it even quieter. Did I say dBs? That's actually not a word, dB. Sorry about that. <laughs> and then that's the threshold. That tells the, the the noise gate when to kick in, when to start pushing the levels down. And then the level leveler range tells it how much to push the levels down. Now, we can go ahead and boost this way up. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and take it to 12 dB, which is its max. It starts to get pretty obvious, though, and this is what that sounds like. Tea garden. Do you drink tea there? You're asking me questions I don't exactly know the answer to. <laughs> okay, let me ask it this way. Did you drink tea there? I didn't, but other people were. Okay, there so there was a tea house there. There's a little tea house, okay. But I suppose at a Japanese tea garden, I suppose there would need to be some sort of tea service. But there are also... Hear how it's kind of cutting out in between phrases? That's That's probably a little too much. I would keep this down closer to 3 dB or... Somewhere there, just do it to taste, use your ears and make a decision. And that's pretty cool. All right, there is also this auto gain decay speed. So you can tell it to be a little smoother. I generally find, uh, well, let's go ahead and play and just see what it does here. The Japanese gardens that don't have tea. Okay, that's cool. I, I was just curious. So what did you experience at the tea garden? What did you see? I saw lots of lovely plants and there were a lot of flowering plants, which was, I hadn't seen it when uh, there was so much flowering. So there were rhododendron bushes, which are impressive because they have very large, bright pink flowers. There were camellias, uh, which look a little bit like a rose, but not exactly. There were some things. Let's get it back to a point here where we're going back and forth a little bit more so we can hear that decay speed. Okay. I'm curious, what. so what defines a Japanese tea garden? Do you drink tea there? You're asking me questions I don't exactly know <laughs> the answer to. Okay, let me ask it this way. Did you drink tea there? I didn't, but other people were. 
Okay. There so was a tea house there. There's a little tea house. Okay. But so when you leave it down at zero, the minimum setting zero seconds, what it does is that when I stop talking, it's going to drop very quickly. That can start to sound a little bit obvious. Um, so you might want to put a little bit in there. Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe let's try this. But uh, if you put the max in there, then it will drop really, really slowly. So it just depends. Uh, use, again, use your ears to determine what sounds best for your particular recording. But here's an example with the minimum setting. Spring. Okay. I'm curious, what, so what defines a Japanese tea garden? Do you drink tea there? You're asking me questions I don't exactly know the answer to. <laughs> okay, let me ask it this way. Did you drink tea there? I didn't, but other people were. Okay, there so there was a tea house there. There's a little tea house, okay. But I suppose at a Japanese tea garden. I... So you can see there it's it's dropping a lot slower when Danny stops talking. It took it a while before it dropped all the way down. That actually can sound natural too. You will get a little bit more noise that way, but it it may also help it to sound more natural. So Overall, there's a quick look at the WT Auto Mixer. There are some other features in here I have not covered today. So for example, if I had a music track, I could add that in here as well, and we could actually duck it. And the way you set that up is that when you set the group to X, then that becomes the channel that gets ducked. In other words, you would set your music track to X, and that when I start talking or Danny starts talking, the music would automatically drop down. So that's a pretty nice feature as well. Now, a couple of things about WT auto mixer that are important to know. You can try the plugin for free for seven days. If you do decide to buy it, it is $160 US at the time of this review. And you might say, Curtis, that's really expensive. And if that's your response, I completely understand. That may totally be the case for you if you're maybe just making recordings for fun and paying for the equipment and software out of your own pocket. That's fine. You can use one of the other techniques we talked about that is maybe a little bit more tedious and maybe you have more time than you have money to spend on this project that's a great solution. Now, if you do have the money and you do need to save time, to me, $160 is very much worth the time. It will save you in all of that tedious post-production work if you create content regularly. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. In the meantime, get out there and make some great sound. Talk soon.